Good afternoon. This is the southern end of the Diablo Mountains, and we're looking here across the Sonoida Valley at the Sierra Cubabis. Those mountains are in Mexico. Between here and there, the United States has an electronic border fence. The anime I want to talk about today has an electronic fence surrounding Japan. Vexil is a recent sci-fi action anime using 3D computer animation. It's released in North America by Funimation. The story opens with an action scene. An elite commando squad called S.W.O.R.D. following up on a tip raids a mansion looking for an international fugitive from Japan hoping to capture him and the people with whom he's conspiring. One of these commandos is the title character, Vexil. She's a kick-ass soldier, if a little on the emotional side. Vexil's commander, Leon, also happens to be Vexil's lover. The sword unit wears power suits, drops from helicopters, crashes through windows, and shoots the crap out of anything that gets in its way on the way to its target. The story is set in the future, of course. By 2050, the UN had created treaties governing the use of robotic and android technology, except for Japan, which was unwilling to forgo such technological development. So, Japan withdrew from the global community, cut itself off entirely from the rest of the world with strictly limited trade. Japan even went so far as to construct an electronic barrier around the entire island that blocked all electronic and visual eavesdropping. Now, it's approximately the year 2077, and not even the best size satellite has pen penetrated Japan's kimono in 20 years. I'm afraid this is the dark future we've all been fearing. No more anime. It turns out the tip that triggered the opening raid came from someone in Japan called Maria, a name from Leon's past. Vexil may be more interested in who the heck this Maria person is to be sending messages to her boyfriend than she is in what the message actually was. Based on what S.W.O.R.D. learns in that raid, they decide it's high time the world had a look inside Japan again, and they dispatch a small S.W.O.R.D. team to infiltrate the isolated and secretive nation. Naturally, Leon's going to lead this reconnaissance team, and Vexil will be part of it. Just as surely, not everything about this mission is going to go as planned. What they find inside Japan is really eye-poppingly unexpected. We'll get to meet the mysterious Maria, a woman from Leon's past. Perhaps surprisingly, the uneasy relationship between Maria and Vexil will turn out to be the most interesting character interaction of the story. sent the messenger to America. Okay, it's pretty clear that what this movie really wants to be is Appleseed. I suppose that's why they wrote, from the creators of Appleseed in big covers on the box cover. They didn't mean Shiro, but they do mean to emulate him. Change the name of S.W.O.R.D. to E.S.W.A.T. and replace the U.N. with Olympus and Japan with any of Shiro's other nation states. We have reversion hard suits and other tech. Vexil even wears Duna Newt's haircut. The main difference in this version is the heroine's boyfriend is still biologically capable of having sex. Director Fumihiko Sori and writer Haruka Honda both worked on the 2004 Appleseed movie. Maybe this is what they had in mind for an Appleseed movie before Jean Wu and Warner Brothers got involved with Ex Machina. Maybe they made this instead. I'm guessing they used the same computer software for the CG. Fair enough, I suppose, but because of all the similarities, they'll have to forgive me if I want to compare Vexil with Ex Machina or the earlier Apathy. Vexil also reminded me of some other sources. There are some very odd giant worm critters called jags. These are described as engineering accidents, by which the author means plot contrivance. We call those things jags. 
every time these jags appear on screen, I keep thinking, the spice must flow. Moadib does not appear in Vexil. Closer to the end, Maria gives an inspirational speech to her little band, and I swear it comes from Braveheart. The story has a few exciting action scenes, flashily animated and well executed, though none are choreographed as dramatically as Ex Machina's. Vexil also has some nice human elements. If they're not exactly subtle, they're not exactly bludgeoned home. The series does seem to drag a little in the middle as the exposition and character introduction and flashbacks slows the momentum of the story without any action to speak of. A lot of that is unnecessary, and some of that could have been skipped in favor of explanation of other plot points. That aside, there's a lengthy assault towards the end that I thought ran a little too long, too many flashy visuals without enough story. And at the big climax, I thought the storytelling got a little sloppy. Too many people survive the unsurvivable, and everything, not just one thing, but half a dozen different things, show up exactly on cue. The cavalry should only arrive just in the nick of time once per film. Well, twice maximum. Having said all that, this is an easy SF action film to watch. The plot may push credibility, but it doesn't break it, and it throws a few nice curves our way. The second watching helped me catch some interesting foreshadowing I'd missed the first time around. The action's fast and generally exciting, though I did think the pacing sagged in the middle. The characters are likable enough, and I bought into their desires. The 3D computer animation is excellent, though I wish they'd lighten up some of the extreme black shadowing. I did like the way they tweaked the color palette for the different settings. A lot of the tech designs looked interesting, too. Funimation's English dub acquits itself quite well. Like Ex Machina, this movie should be accessible to both anime fans in the U.S. and others. I give Vexio four stars. I don't know if it's going to wear well, but it's an entertaining action enough yarn to merit a couple of hours watching it once or maybe twice. Funimation's DVD has absolutely no extras unless you consider ads you can't skip at the beginning an extra. So, I suppose that means they'll issue a special edition in another six months. Thanks for listening.